Hello, welcome back to the Unknown Experience. Today we're taking a look at the Inspiration4 mission's return to Earth. So congratulations SpaceX and Inspiration4 crew. I know the background is not a video of a distant nebula or some star system. It's actually footage of the Inspiration4 Dragon taking off on a fucking rocket. Where you can see the stage separation and the dragon that continues on to space and the falcon rocket that returns to Earth. And there you can see the difference between the International Space Station, the Hubble Space Telescope and Inspiration Force orbit. At one stage Inspiration 4 was actually at 590 kilometers, higher than both the International Space Station and the Hubble Space Telescope. So the crew of Inspiration 4 did not just um, go to space to play around, they actually did some valid scientific experiments. One of them was actually using an ultrasound to test how the human body reforms in zero gravity. And what makes this significant is the fact that all the information that they gather on this or through these experiments will be made available for just about anyone that wants to use it to improve the quality of human life and especially human life in space. Like you can see on screen, they're opening the hatch and this hatch contains, or well, reveals the cupola. This is a glass window, not just any glass window. This glass window is the largest glass window that was ever sent into space. I was just a tiny bit disappointed in uh, the fact that you can't see the stars and the Earth through this dome on a camera. Um, obviously it's going to be different for the astronauts uh, because of the glare um, from this dome. It makes it difficult to appreciate the view if you're not there yourself. So taking photos through a camera through this um, glass dome uh, might not really give you the correct idea of the view these guys are appreciating. There you can see Haley and Cyan inside the glass dome. They had quite a few interviews with especially St. Jude's, which is a hospital that specializes in the treatment of childhood cancers. And this is some of the fun they had. Um, there you can see Siam explaining or showing her artwork. She drew a dragon capsule on its way to space. I know that I, I know they had some cold pizza as well in space. There you can see Chris with his ukulele. He played a few notes. You can see Jared floating around. So I am with a artwork in the background. It seems like it's always fun to play around in zero gravity. Now you're going to see Hey performing a few back flips or front flips. Show the effect of the zero gravity. And the stuffed puppy you see there that Ailey is holding is actually the zero gravity indicator. Um, you'll remember if you saw the live launch that I covered this puppy suddenly began floating and that's an indication that you're in orbit. Um, at the time I didn't realize it was the zero G indicator, I just thought it was like a memento that someone took up with them, but it's actually, but it's actually the zero gravity indicator that they, used to, that they used to tell them when they're actually in orbit. They actually saw the number of these puppies um, as part of the fundraising exercise for St. Jude's. And if I'm not mistaken, they've made their target of $200 million and I think they've already exceeded that, if I'm not mistaken. Elon Musk himself contributed, if I'm not mistaken, to the tune of $50 million. And Jared, um, the commander, the mission commander for this particular mission, also contributed um, 100 million. There you can see the effects of the zero gravity on the bottle of water. 
see the bubble stays in the middle. It actually goes to show you how you can generate your own bits of gravity in space. Now this is the space suit that they are wearing. Um, it's custom made for each of these four. So it's not it's going to fit the one it's designed for. And not just that, um, you'll see none of these astronauts ever swap their seats. Um, because the seats are custom made for the suits specifically as well. There you can see the mission control in the background. And that's the Dragon Capsule. Um, this specific Dragon Capsule is a modified version and you can see the glass cupola at the top there. The Dragon Capsule also contains about 16 Draco thrusters. Now these Jaco thrusters are used to maneuver this craft into position or into different orbits and also to de-orbit once it comes back down to Earth. It's got four Super Draco thrusters and those four Super Draco thrusters are basically used in case of emergency and they are designed specifically aimed towards the launch escape system. Um, for example if something goes wrong in terms of the launch they are used to to get the astronauts to safety. The darker section at the bottom um, is also referred to as the trunk. Now this specific area, this trunk section at the bottom of the Dragon or underneath the Dragon capsule itself, it jettisons this trunk before it re-enters and when it does this you will see that the heat shield tiles are revealed underneath that. When the craft re-enters the atmosphere, the heat shield tiles along with the Earth's atmosphere assists the craft to slow down. When it re-enters this craft, this Dragon vehicle, travels at approximately 27,000 kilometers an hour and it has to slow down to about 700 kilometers an hour before the parachutes start coming out. It's got two sets of parachutes. The first deployment consists of two parachutes that slows it down to a certain degree um, but not too much at a time, otherwise this would damage the craft or the astronauts themselves. Once it's slowed down sufficiently to under about 600 to 500 kilometers an hour, the main parachutes open up and are deployed and they slow the craft down to about 15 miles an hour or run about 30 kilometers an hour, which is also roughly the speed at which it makes contact with the water. And there you can see the first signs of the Dragon Craft entering Earth's atmosphere. There's also a period during re-entry about three and a half to four and a half minutes where there is no communication between the Dragon Craft and a mission control. This happens because the craft basically heats up, it super heats, it becomes about 3,500 3, degrees Fahrenheit and that creates a plasma around the craft that stops any communication from going back and forth. This is just before the parachutes open. The first set you will see the momentary. There you can see the first chutes that just opened. And once it's slowed down enough, these chutes don't provide too much resistance but just enough to slow it up in preparation of the main chutes to open, avoiding any severe shock or damage to the craft itself or the astronauts. And there you can see the four main chutes deploying. And those chutes are actually gigantic. Once this craft makes contact with the water, you'll see in relation to the craft how big these parachutes actually are. SpaceX, um, in conjunction or with the help of the US Air Force, tested these parachutes multiple times. 
So these shoots assist this craft in slowing down from about 700 kilometers an hour to roughly 30, well, 30, yeah, 30 kilometers. And remember, when this craft enters the atmosphere, it's traveling 17,000 miles an hour. Um, I think it's roughly about 27,000 kilometers. Um, and the 27,000 kilometers is basically because you need to be at that speed to remain in orbit. So if you want to, want to re-enter, you start slowing down and Earth's gravity will automatically start to pull you towards the planet. And then the problem is that you need to slow down and well, that's why you have heat shields. If they fail, you've got a big problem. I think if I was one of these astronauts, I would be more worried about the half an hour or 20 minutes that I need to spend on this Dragoncraft in the ocean, not the launch, not the part where you are physically in space, but that specific part would make me nervous for some reason, I don't know why. I think it's more a factor of motion sickness there. Now you can see it's almost on its target and it actually landed on the Florida coast. They had a primary and secondary location to land this craft. Um, one in the Gulf of Mexico and one on the other end of the Florida, Florida pan and handle um, in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm not sure which one they used. I suspect it um, touched down um, in the Gulf of Mexico. 30 kilometers an hour could be pretty fast if you're not prepared to make contact at that type of speed. So the first all civilian space flight, which included four astronauts, Jared, Ailey, Chris and Cyan, touched down on the 18th of September 2021 with absolutely no problems. Hence potentially opening up a whole new world in terms of space flight and private commercial space travel. There you can see the Dragoncraft being loaded onto a loading vessel. These guys are actually lucky they only spent three days in space. Um, they take it pretty serious that you can see them out opening the hatch. They take it pretty serious in terms of people staying in space and then coming back down because your body is now used to zero gravity and now you're back on Earth's gravity. Now you can feel the impact of Earth's gravity on your body again. And if you stay in space for months at a time or even close to a year in some cases, it's a big problem and you're gonna struggle once you get out. But these guys only went for three days, so it was not that big of an issue. There you can see them talking to the guys on board, congratulating them. And the first guy to take a look at these astronauts is usually a medical or chief medical officer to ensure that they um, are in good physical shape to exit the vehicle. first person to exit the vehicle once they're back on Earth is Haley. She is the chief medical, medical officer on board. You can see her exiting the vehicle without any issues whatsoever. And yeah, so that wraps it up. That was a successful inspiration for launch. SpaceX could not have dreamt of it going any better. So that was the inspiration for mission, finally completed and I'm happy to tell you that everything went 100% as planned. The Age of Dragon might be coming to an end soon, and by soon I mean possibly in the next 5 years. Once Starship is operational and fully functioning and has proved itself, you won't see this type of re-entry. But I think in future we will look back in about 5 or 10 years from now and think to ourselves, whoa, is that the way we came back from space? And we will shake our heads. Um, I think the time of coming back via parachute, those days are numbered. 
the Starship will most likely prove me correct in the next few years. I hope so and I hope um, that many more people are encouraged by this mission and, and like me are looking forward to the day when Starship is operational and space is way more accessible and we are able to build great big new space stations. Another way in which Starship will revolutionize space is the fact that when it re-enters it does not use parachutes, it's completely and fully reusable and will change the game forever. And I'm personally looking forward to a time where people can go onto a starship and land anywhere else on Earth or have the capability to launch heavy equipment into space to construct space stations and even bigger spaceships in orbit and by launching these heavy objects into space we'll have the capability to even construct space stations that have a form of gravity more than likely rotational gravity which is the only option in terms of gravity we will have for the near or foreseeable future i think that time is around the corner and i'm personally looking forward to that the next milestone personally i think would be to get starship orbital and that launch should take place later this year but more likely probably early next year as per always thanks for watching please remember to smash that like button and subscribe before i go uh, keep your eyes open for a potential ghost story coming up soon the particular individual um, promised me a story and i suspect that story will be in incoming very soon so keep well see you next time and don't Thank you.